Melissa Francis was just eight years old when she landed a dream role on one of the most popular shows on television, playing little Cassandra Cooper Ingalls on the primetime series Little House on the Prairie. You can watch those all day. Now a successful broadcast journalist with three kids of her own, Melissa's come a long, long way from those days on the prairie. And she's revealing how her time on that iconic show has shaped her life on and off camera. It's in her new book, and it's called Lessons, Lessons from, from the Prairie. Oh. Hi, Melissa. Welcome back. Congrats. I love seeing you guys. Yay. What thank a, you. By the way, what a smart concept. Oh, I have to say, you. yeah, because it's not just a memoir, but, right. and it's not yeah. just a self help, it's both. People know yeah. you from two worlds, too, right? From being this little child actress to where you are today. Uh, my goal with this, first of all, was to just make fun of myself for a few yeah. hundred pages. And you can pay I, for it. There you go. I was <laughs> thinking about selling it with an adult undergarment because I think that you will laugh so hard. Yes. There might be some sort of an accident, so I probably That's why should have done depends. that. Yes, exactly. Exactly. I heard you guys discussing that at the beginning, yes. by the way. It was a joke. Yeah. Hopefully. Um, <laughs> anyway, so it's so I you can laugh at all of the crazy things that have happened to me in my lifetime and the embarrassing things and see how deeply flawed I am from start to finish. And after you're done laughing at everything that's happened to me and you have a good time, you'll see that I've actually learned some really valuable things mm -hmm. along the way. Uh -huh. The you know, this book was actually Megan Kelly thought yeah. of the concept. That's, She's a good friend. Oh, really? Yes. Did and she, she come to you and say she, hey? said, she said I have a, a really easy idea for you. I, and he, she said, you have so many funny stories and good ideas, you could kind of string it all together this way. And it got me thinking that so many of the things today, that the values I have and the things that shape my life, I actually learned all the way back then. For example, uh -huh. I mean, Michael Landon, everybody knows him as, as Pa on yeah. Little House in the Prairie, but he was one of the original first smart businessmen, oh, small business owners in Hollywood. I mean, yeah. he owned the show, he created it, he wrote wow. it, he produced it, and he, he acted in it. with his money, boy. He was cheap as hell, <laughs> let me tell you. But in a smart way, like he had a very modest Winnebago, you know, like a, not even a whole Winnebago, one of the little dressing rooms. So you couldn't ask, you couldn't be a diva and ask if for something bigger because he was the biggest star. And he really ran a tight ship, but he also taught us the value in a job well done and the pride in a paycheck that's your own. I was yep. talking to Melissa Gilbert recently and she was saying that none of the kids from Little House on the Prairie ended up in rehab or robbing a dry cleaner. <laughs> if you think about it, yeah, no <laughs> names figure, there. They really did. Well, but he also, you know, he, he treated us like adults, and yeah. we had a lot of fun when we were off camera. But when it was time to go, you he, he was very you serious. Fix your marks yeah. and know your lines. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we both had experiences where we showed up one day, and we weren't serious, and we didn't know our lines, and he gave you that look. And he went from being very funny, like any good babysitter, to being dead serious. Were you scared of him when he... You serious? know, I felt bad you that I had let him down. that I'd let the whole group yeah. down, and it was a really happy team. They knew they had a good thing going. So when you wrecked it, you know, you yeah. felt really bad about it. Yeah. And I think that really taught us all a lot about having a work ethic and working really hard. And it carried me through. I left there and I went to Harvard and I studied economics. I went to Harvard. Yeah. Like yeah. Oh, there I but was. But you've always <laughs> been good at math. You just love that sort of thing. I, or business I loved. And... I loved math what, and politics. Was it hard to leave? Like you were in. Show Showbiz. I mean, yeah. was it hard to say, I'm going to say goodbye to this chapter and start something else? You know, it was, but it also, I started when I was six months old, and I did... A, you, you'd had a career already at a young age, yeah, a whole and career. And by high school, I sort of felt like I had done it, and I wondered what else was out there, and I also wondered what would my life like be, what would my life be like without this? Because I had oh. never tried that before. Uh -huh. So I wanted to go away to a school where I couldn't come home on the weekend on audition and see if it drew me back or if I was done with it. And, you know, I figured I would, I, I felt sort of done with it. There's my friend, Michelle. She was part of the inspiration for this book. That's actually Sheryl Sandberg's little sister. Oh, you're which is, Yes, which is very funny because one of the chapters in here is about don't lean in. Mm -hmm. In fact, sit down and take a load off yeah, and, and yeah, maybe have a glass of mommy's time out. I think we put too much pressure on ourselves we these sure days. Yeah. And, and speaking of pressure, you've uh -huh. been under a lot of pressure over at Fox recently, a lot of changes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you, you don't discuss everything. You don't discuss Bill O'Reilly in your book. Right. Right. Uh, but you do say um, some other things. Yeah. Anything you want to say today? No, I mean, uh, you know, I, I, when the whole thing happened, I was gobsmacked like so many other people. And, um, you know, I was didn't feel like it was going on in our network, the sexual harassment by Roger Ailes we were talking mm -hmm. about. Um, and when I looked back on things, conversations we had had and things that had happened, I realized it was pretty clear what was going on. And I kind of outlined that in the book, the details mm -hmm. of that. But I also go through, you know, when I was very young, I was 22 and I was in a, um, a small town working my way up, a news director showed up on my doorstep at two o'clock or midnight, you know, middle of the night, whatever it was, pounded on the door and wanted to come in. And this is all in the book. And 
I opened the door. I was doing the morning show, so I, you know, you know, by midnight you've been asleep for a yeah. long time. I was thrown. Um, my instinct kicked in. I didn't let him over the door into my apartment. Wow. But he went away, and when I woke up in the morning, I knew that he was going to be furious, you know, and embarrassed yeah. or whatever else. I called my agent. I quit. I got out of town. I found another job. Right then and there, huh? Yes. Wow. But now I realize what a terrible decision that was because I left that monster to then go prey on other young women. Yeah. And I think that's the lesson that we've learned from this. Yeah. Is speak that up. you have to speak up and say something, even though here I was this, you know, 22 year old who had only had one or two on air jobs. You know, I didn't really have any record to run on. But who I would just believe you anyway, him. right? That's yeah, the thing. That's and I'm sure think. he did it to many other people. I, I think the other thing I'm gonna say, which is gonna be very controversial, is this is going on in a lot of other networks. Yeah. I mean, other women have come to me from other networks to talk about the person who's currently working at their network, yes, mm -hmm. who's doing it's all something over the world, similar. though. It's yeah. all in over. every business. Yeah. So to think it's a yeah. Fox problem isn't it, that's for not sure controversial. It it's yeah. totally true. But it's everywhere. We got to go, also everybody. Point out that Roger Ailes has repeatedly denied sexual harassment allegations, and we also contacted his lawyer, who told us that he never made that statement that uh, that you attributed to him, uh, sure. and it doesn't constitute sexual harassment. His lawyer also noted that you have been highly complimentary. Of Ailes in the past. Uh, all true. All true. All true. The all man true. was a genius. There's yeah. no question about that. And also Bill O'Reilly also yeah. says that the allegations are untrue. I wish we, we could talk to you all day. But by the way, can we just talk about, let's make sure people buy this yes. book. Lessons Fantastic. from the Prairie. If you want to laugh, great advice. Yeah. please, I, you will yeah. be roaring with laughter. And then I have some great, like how to turn disaster into golden opportunity. I have the perfect formula. You could turn anything into a golden opportunity, I promise. It's That's okay. a good tease. Yeah. Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Channel, subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.